Today, we are wrapping up our generosity campaign as we look towards 2022 and all that God is calling us to as a community. These past couple of weeks, we've been challenged to rekindle the gift in our own lives. We've heard Pastor Emily share how far we've come this past year during the pandemic, updating our space and diving into this virtual live online streaming. We listened to powerful testimonies from Stephanie Hampton and Leslie Kerr, who beautifully captured the why of giving and shared how PPC is a priority in their own lives. Today is Pledge Dedication Sunday, meaning that today is the day to put into practice all that we've been hearing. I've always believed that you should tell things as they are, and so to get straight to the point, these last few weeks we've been talking about money. And today is the day when we're going to pledge and bring that into practice. Now, if that makes you uncomfortable, do not worry because you're not alone. I don't know about you, but I have a tendency to tune out and withdraw whenever I hear talk about money or am asked for money personally. For example, just this past week, I received a letter from Wake Forest in the mail and was pretty sure what it was. My first thought was just to toss it in the trash, but I figured I should at least open it in case it was from the Divinity School or maybe someone I knew. I tore it open, saw the return to the school envelope inside, and asked for donations, and immediately tossed it in the trash as I originally planned. (laughs) Now, that may not be the best or most appropriate response to receiving a letter from your university, and I apologize to whoever may have sent that to me, but it can be a bit put off when I'm asked for money in this way. And so I completely understand how difficult and unapproachable this topic can be for many of us. But my hope today is to be as upfront and transparent as possible these next few minutes as we discuss the spiritual side of giving. I first learned about giving as a young child growing up from my parents. We attended church every week and our Sunday school class usually met during worship. Once a month, month, however, our teachers got a break, and we were instead invited to go to big church, as we used to call it. We would sit there throughout the service, half paying attention and drawing on the note cards that were in the pew, but then came our favorite part of the service when they would call for the offering. And that may sound peculiar to you, but my siblings and I loved to fight over who got to put the cash or check from our parents in the bowl that Sunday. I can remember being upset when my older brother, Brad, got to do it two months in a row, which was not fair. (laughs) Yet the joy of putting that money in the offering plate as it came by stuck with us. And I remember my parents telling me from a young age how it was important to give back to the church. So why should we give our money to the church? That's the big question. And we're going to look at the core of our faith to see what we can discover. The call of our faith is so beautifully summed up in the passage that Susan read for us this morning. The Christian faith boils down to this, loving God and loving people. I find myself often repeating this phrase because it wonderfully captures what the Christian life is meant to be about. The truth, this truth, comes directly from the mouth of Jesus, and we're told that they are the two greatest commandments— meaning they're models and reminders of how we should live our life. Of course, there's a lot more that goes into Christianity, but at its core, our faith is about loving God and loving people. That may feel simple, but we've seen time and time again how complicated and difficult, tough that can be to follow. The same could be said for giving in my life. Though I knew the importance of giving to the church from a young age, I had a hard time figuring out what to give when I first started my full-time job here at Potomac Presbyterian Church. This was my first full-time position, and I remember after I accepted it and saw my salary, I realized that I needed to map out a budget for the year. I pulled up one of those generic budget sheets you can find online and started plugging in all those important monthly things that need to be paid for no matter what, like rent, food expenses, car, phone, retirement, video game expenses, and all those things you just can't go without. (laughs) Then I came to the last line of the budget that said donations slash charities. 
I was blessed to have my parents' support through school, along with scholarships, so this was the first time I'd really thought of donating as a monthly or yearly practice with my budget. I looked at my salary, looked down at the expenses I had put down, and realized there was barely anything left. So as I typically do in these situations in my life, I closed it and decided to deal with it later. And don't worry, I did go back to it, but not until after I reached out to people in my life for some advice. Mark's gospel gives us advice on how to live into the call of loving God and loving others. The author gives us a detailed explanation of what loving God specifically looks like by saying, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your might, and with all your strength. Heart, soul, mind, strength. In other words, loving God means that everything we have, all that we are, and all that we do shall be used to love the Lord. There's no separation between us and God. There's no separation between the secular and sacred. Faith, loving God, and loving people isn't something that we just do on Sundays and then forget about the rest of the week. It applies to our entire lives, including our finances. We give of our hearts, souls, minds, strength, time, talents, energy, and money in order to love God and love people in the world. This is our touch point as we think about faith relating to our money. It is one of the many ways that we can love God. So I called my parents and talked with them about what I should give to the church. We discussed for a while, and they shared that their practice had always been to give 10% of their salary to the church, or whatever community, church community, we were a part of. I knew that they did this growing up, as each week we would place that donation in the basket, but it had a much more powerful effect on me as I was looking at my own budget and salary and realizing what that 10% chunk really meant. I asked them if they ever worried about making ends meet by giving that much to the church, and they said no. They trusted that God would provide, and they testify that God followed through time and time again in their life, even when things may have looked dicey. So with that, I went back to the same generic budget sheet I pulled up online. I put in my annual salary at the top, but this time scrolled all the way down to the bottom and placed in my donation amount for the year. I then began to work through rent, food, car, phone, would you believe there is even some leftover for a video game budget at the end? <laughs> Beginning with that donation bottom line at the bottom first, instead of everything else above it, marked a shift in how I viewed my own money. Rather than focusing on what was left over and then giving that to God or the church, my priority turned around. God came first. Following this budget for the past two and a half years has been life-giving and has worked out in the end. Following this budget these past two and a half years, I was blessed to be able to purchase a townhouse with my older brother just this year, showing that God has, has had my back through it all. And today, we are asking everyone from the congregation to turn in a pledge. A pledge is simply what you intend to give to the church in 2022. You don't have to attach a check with it or have all the money right now. Rather, it's an indicator of what you feel called to give this upcoming year. These pledges are really helpful and practical to the church because it allows our session, the leadership body of PPC, Potomac Presbyterian Church, to plan out a budget for this upcoming year. If we know what the congregation aims to give, it allows us to properly plan for what the year will look like and set the funding for various ministries of the church. You may be surprised that we're asking for it in October, since the new year is still a bit far away. But the sooner we get it in, the more time our session has time to discern where God might be calling us in 2022. The last couple of weeks, Emily has shared what an increase in giving could provide, including new staff members, an increase in our online outreach, shade for our patio, and increased giving and partnerships with groups who are doing God's hands, or being God's hands and feet in the world around us. Now, we don't only accept pledges so that we can plan. They're also a spiritual practice for each one of us. 
They help us set our minds on God and prioritize giving back to others and supporting what God is doing here at the church. What is our priority? Is it God or is it money? As I've grown older, I've seen the importance and value of giving back. It is a faith practice for me to give to the church and is something I happily choose to do. The reason for this is because I believe in the mission and ministry of PPC. We are a community who seeks to care for all with faith, hope, and love. That's a vision I can get behind and feel challenged to live into. It takes time, energy, gifts, and money to care for all with faith, hope, and love. But that leads us to the question of how much should we give? And the honest answer is that's between you and God. You may often hear about a tithe in church settings, like we were talking about with the kids, which has many touch points in our Bible, stretching all the way back to Genesis. Leviticus 27.30, for instance, states, All tithes from the land, whether the seed from the ground or the fruit from the tree, are the Lord's. They are holy to the Lord. So a tithe is typically thought of to be one-tenth of one's earnings, which would be set aside for God. That can be a helpful number for us, but the overall message that we see in the Bible time and time again is to generally be generous people. 2 Corinthians 9, 7 highlights that each one of us must give as we have made up our mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. It is a joyful and life-giving thing to give back to others and to God. And now I promise to be transparent in this money talk, and so I'm happy to share my own personal giving in 2022. So following the example set by my parents, I'm pledging 10% of my salary to the church as I've done in the past. And I'm not saying everyone has to adopt this practice or that this much must only go to Potomac Presbyterian Church in our giving, but instead I'm sharing that I trust that my money is well spent here at the church doing God's work. I do it as a spiritual practice, loving God with all that I have, including my own money. And the danger in this talk as we think of money in our spiritual life is that where are we placing our faith? Is money something that is hold, being held over us or that we're placing older, over God? Matthew 6, 24 brings home this point in saying, No one can serve two masters. For a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. The reason I choose to give to this community is because I believe in the ministry that happens here. We have a devoted staff, session, deacon group, volunteer, and congregation who seeks to make the world a better place by loving God and loving people. The money that I give to the church is spent in way more wonderful ways than I ever could on my own. We have experts and passionate people in various positions within the church who make sure that the money that we give is spent well. I struggled with pulling together my own yearly budget, but luckily we have Lindsay Chapin, Paul Mamillion, and the rest of the finance committee here at the church who are able to plan a yearly budget, factoring in projected donations, current capital, and things I couldn't even pretend to say that I understand. <laughs> and the money that we give to the church is in good hands and goes toward the work and ministry that God is calling us to in each time and season. For example, our mission committee is dedicated to helping our community locally, nationally, and internationally. Julia McMahon, the chair of, commission, of mission committee, is incredible at leading the team, organizing drives, and finding where our funds will be put to best use. I could go on and on about how much good happens here at the church through the staff, committees, and ministries, which is why I'm happy to give. Together, we're able to make a greater difference than we ever could alone. And the best part of it all is that you are invited to partake in this process. If you want to see firsthand what the church is up to and where your money goes, you're invited to join the finance, mission, fellowship, property, worship, congregational care, and or Christian education committees. You are most welcome to join in and help discern where God is calling us this next year in 2022 and beyond. By giving to the church, 
We're helping those around us and trusting that God will lead us to greater impact in our world. So now let's get down to the very practical, tangible side of things. Since it's Pledge Dedication Sunday, we will be collecting pledge cards today that you can find in the back of the sanctuary if you're here with us this morning or online through the email that went out. There's a link you can do there. And on the back of the card this morning, if you want to do it online, you can use the QR code on the back. So I invite you to fill out that form right now, as this is our time we're setting aside for it, as you think about what God might be calling you to give in 2022. Write it down and send it in by either bringing it up or placing it in the baskets as you leave this morning. We are giving everything we have, including our finances, our time, our energy, our passion to God. And you are invited to partake in this process. What is God calling you to give in 2022? How might you rekindle the gift? Take some time now to submit that pledge as we listen to the hymn, I greet thee who my sure redeemer art. Amen.